All right, guys, there we got inverse trig functions and their graphs. Kind of weird video. The work, this is not really hard, but the, the video might be a little long. So sorry about that ahead of time. Let's just get through this thing. All right, inverses. Don't forget what inverses are. Inverses are when your X's and Y's just switch. They interchange, which also means, remember, domain is the X, range is the Y. So your domain and ranges are going to switch. They're going to, one's going to become the other. Um, remember the symbol for inverses is a little negative one exponent, F negative one. And don't forget that stuff as we go through. So what was the domain for cosine and sine is now going to become the range. What was range for cosine and sine and tangent is now going to do the domain. Easy for me to say. All right, inverse sine, let's start there. First of all, remember what the sine graph looked like. It looked like this first graph right there with the blue and the red. And if you think back to inverses, we had we did this test to see if they were one-to-one, -one, with functions were one-to-one, -one, and one-to-one -one meant they had an inverse. If it was one-to-one, -one, that means it didn't have an inverse. Well, you can tell sine would fail the horizontal line test. You could draw a horizontal hit it, you know, an infinite amount of times. So what we do is we, we do what's called restricting the domain. We just take this red section right here that is between, by the way, pi over 2 and negative pi over 2. That's important. Between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. And that becomes um, the part of the graph we're going to look at. Okay, so that part, if you look at the second graph over here, I'm trying. If you look at the second graph right here, you can tell that's what that is. So that's the part of the sine graph that we're going to take. And I'm going to switch the x's and the y's. And when you do that, if you switch the x and y's around, you end up with this graph right here. That is the graph of the inverse of sine, where the numbers on my x-axis, if you notice, are now on my y-axis. Used to, we would put negative 1 and 1 on the y-axis, now we put them on the x-axis. And the graph looks just like that. Now, what that means for you practically is the only answers you can give for an inverse sine problem, your dome, your range, your answers must be between negative power 2 and positive power 2, which is basically quadrant 1 and quadrant 4. Again, inverse sine, quadrant 1, quadrant 4. All right, here's the definition of inverse sine. <coughs> Sorry about that. The inverse sine is the function written like that with a negative 1. There's your domain. We just saw that, negative 1 to positive 1. Your range is between negative power 2 and positive power 2. And basically, here's what happened. Look at that. The sine of y equals x. That means the inverse sine of x is y. Your x's and y's switch. Another way to write it, if you don't write the negative 1, if you don't write sine negative 1 x, you have to write arc sine. If you see, if you see this anywhere, arc sine, it means exactly the same thing as inverse sine. And again, I, I put the graph on this one again just so you could get a good visual of it. Um, that's what the graph looks like. And again, your domain, how far left and right it's going, between negative 1 and positive 1. How far up and down is it going? Between negative power 2 and positive power 2. So I'm going to say this one more time. When you're giving an answer to an inverse sine problem, your answer must be between negative power 2 and positive power 2. They can't be bigger than positive power 2. They can't be less than negative power 2. What you think about it, that's just right here on a coordinate plane, negative power 2 for taking a unit circle. Positive power 2 is up there, so that gives you quadrant 1 and quadrant 4. Let me show you a couple. All right, the first one says find each value. Okay, it says inverse sine of a half. Inverse sine of a half is asking you where is sine 1 half. And by now you should know that's like power 6. And power 6 is good. It's in quadrant 1. It's less than power 2. We're all good. Okay, the second one says where is sine negative a half. Well, that would be quadrant 4. Remember, with inverse sine, you have to use quadrant 1 and quadrant 4. And I'm going to write my answer like negative power 6 because your answers must be between negative power 2 and positive power 2. So if you see sine of a negative number here, inverse sine, I should say inverse sine of a negative, your answer is going to be negative. Okay, yeah, no big deal. This one says where is sine 3 halves? And the answer to that is a nowhere. That's undefined. Remember what our domain is. Our domain is between negative 1 and positive 1. That's 1 and a half. Okay, so it's undefined. Hope that makes some sense. The work is very little today, and if you know your chart or your unit circle numbers, you're fine. You're gonna, it's going to be really quick. Um, it's going to take a minute to explain. All right, um, little thing here. If you do sine of the inverse sine of x, you just get x. We did that earlier. Remember when you do inverses of each other like this? We do the composition function. You always get x. You always get x when you do that. And x is what's inside there. Okay, so... Look what that means down here. It says find each value. This is saying the inverse sine of sine of power 3. So it's like power 3 is the x. So the answer is going to be power 3. Let me show you why though real quick. If we just did the parentheses, let's, let's say the inverse wasn't even there. And I just did what's inside. Sine of power 3 is 
square root of 3 over 2. Okay, now, this is asking you, where is sine square root of 3 over 2? Well, at pi over 3, that's where, okay, and there you go. Part B says sine 2 pi over 3. Now, that's quadrant 2, which isn't in our inverse sine domain, but it is in our domain for regular sine, so it's okay. Sine of 2 pi over 3 is square root of 3 over 2. Now, it's asking you, where is sine square root of 3 over 2? And the answer is, well, at pi over 3. Now, that looks kind of weird at first because you probably thought it was going to be 2 pi over 3. It will always be the same thing if this number in there is within our range, okay, which is between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. If it's not inside our range, you have to kind of work it out like I just did. Ask yourself what that value is. Then, do, okay, where is sine that? What's the, what's the inverse sign of that? Where is sine square root of 3 over 2? Oh, pi over 3. Okay, same place that sine pi over 3 is. Kind of weird, I know, but hang in there. Inverse cosine, let's go to cosine. Cosine, again, there's a regular cosine graph. It would fail the horizontal line test miserably, which means it would not have an inverse. So to make it have an inverse, and it sounds weird to say that, we're going to restrict the domain to that section right there. That section is between 0 and pi. To clean it up, it would look like that right there. That part would pass the horizontal line test. And so we're going to use this to find the inverse. Okay, when I find the inverse, my x's become my y's, my y's become my x's, and it's going to look like this. Okay, where my, these numbers, again, this is 0 and pi, were on the x-axis, now they're on the y-axis. The negative 1 and positive 1 were on the y-axis, now they're on the x-axis. Okay, so I switched my x and y's, and that, that did that to the graph. Okay, my x's become a y's, so my graph, I'm not going to say the word flipped, but when I change the x's and y's around, that's what it looks like. Okay, so one thing about this one. The range on this is going to be, you know, if you look, well, if you look left and right, the domain is negative 1 to positive 1. The range is from 0 to pi, 0 to pi. If you think about your coordinate plane graph, 0 is there, pi is over there. And if you go 0 to pi, you're doing this. So for inverse cosine, we're going to think about quadrants 1 and 2. 1 and 2. Okay, again, here's the definition of inverse cosine. Inverse cosine, written like this with the negative 1, has domain negative 1 to 1, range is 0 to pi. And if you look at this, that's just showing you that you switch your x and y's. You can also write it like this, arc cosine. Arc cosine means exactly the same thing as cosine negative 1. And one more time, here's the picture I just showed you. That's what the graph looks like. And the big deal to get from that is your range is from 0 to pi. Your answers, when you give an answer, <coughs> sorry, having a hard time. When you give an answer for inverse cosine, your answer must be between 0 and pi. It must be either quadrant 1 if it's positive, quadrant 2 if it's negative. I'm going to show you that on the next slide. All right, this one says, where is cosine? Square root of 3 over 2. Well, it's square root of 3 over 2 at pi over 6. All right, pi over 6. Quadrant 1, we're good. That's between 0 and pi, so that answer is perfect. This one says, where is cosine 0? Cosine of 0 at 0. Um, I'll just take that back right there. Just mess that one up. Where's cosine 0? Cosine of 0 at pi over 2. Because remember, pi over 2, the point is 1, 0. Sorry. The point is 0. I'm having a struggle. Point is 0, 1. Cosine is the x. So, pi over 2, which is still a good answer because the answer must be between 0 and pi. All right, this one says, where's cosine 5 sevenths? Where is cosine 5 7? So it's not, that one, not one that we know in our head. So I'd actually take that one and punch it in my calculator. I'll hit it. The, and if you're hitting inverse cosine in your calculator, you hit second cosine, or it stands for inverse cosine, and that will pop up. And when you enter that in your calculator, you're going to get 0.7752. Okay, so there's inverse cosine on the calculator. Same thing a minute, as we did a minute ago. If you have inverses, if you do composition of functions with inverses, you always just get x. You get x because that's what you're putting in. That's because that's x and that's x. So if I come down here, I have the inverse of cosine. It's 2 there. It's 2 pi over 3. That's going to, I'm going to get 2 pi over 3. And the reason I can get that answer is because that right there, that value is between 0 and pi. It's 2 thirds of the way to pi. The long method, which we're going to have to do in the second one, but let me show you this on this first one so maybe it'll make sense on the second one, just worked out the inside. What is cosine of 2 pi over 3? Well, that's negative a half. So this is asking you, where is cosine negative a half? Ah, oh, a 2 pi over 3. Okay, that's how it works. Now, B's is a tad bit different. Hang in here on this one. Because 5 pi over 3 is not in my range, my range right here, look, 0 to pi, 0 to pi. Um, 
I'm going to go ahead and work out cosine 5 power 3. Cosine 5 power 3, that's quadrant 4. That would just be positive a half. So now it's asking me, where is cosine positive a half? What is the inverse cosine of a half? Which means, where is cosine a half? At pi over 3. And that's a good answer because the answer must be between 0 and pi. Must be between 0 and pi. I'm trying to drill that in your head. All right, last one. Inverse tangent. Uh, same kind of stuff. Inver Here's the definition of inverse tangent. You write it with negative 1. Um, you switch your x and y's. Here's the weird thing, though. Your domain for inverse tangent is all reals, which is we haven't seen that yet. The range of inverse tangent is negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. Let me show you why on the graph down here. Oh, and by the way, you can go arctan. You can also call it arctan. Same thing as tangent negative 1. All right, here's the regular tangent graph right, right here. And if you look at it, we're going to limit. Obviously, it would fail the horizontal line test too, right? It would hit it more than once. So we're going to limit it to this that one cycle, this one cycle right here. And where does that cycle between? Negative pi over 2 and positive 2. How high does it go? Forever. How low does it go? Forever. So if we do the inverse of that, and I put my numbers that used to be on the x-axis on the y-axis. The power 2s go on the y. The 1s and stuff go on the x, which means now it's going left forever, right forever. So your domain is all real, like we said a second ago. But your range, negative power 2 to positive power 2. Listen to this. That's exactly the same thing sine was. It's the same range as sine, inverse sine. So... We can also use quadrant 1 and quadrant 4 because I can go from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2 and use those two quadrants to give, to give my answers to inverse tangent problems or inverse tangent values, All right, just like I did with sine. All right, here we go. This first one's saying where is tangent 1? Well, tangent is 1. Remember tangent is sine over cosine? So tangent is 1 where sine and cosine are the same value. That's power 4. You should know that one by now anyway. This one says, where is tangent squared to 3? Good trick here. Tangent squared to 3 at power 3. And the way I remember that, because that has 1, 3, that's 1, 3. It's power 3. I will say this. If you saw this, if you saw inverse tangent of squared to 3 over 3, that'd be power 6. And the way I remember that is it takes two threes to get to 6. That's just a little hint. Okay, and part C says, what is the inverse tangent of 20? Remember, that is okay because... Our domain for inverse tangent is all reals. You can go, remember the graph went left and right forever. So I can punch that in my calculator because it's not one I don't know. So I'm punching it in right now. Looking at it, I got negative 1.5208. There it is, inverse tangent of 20. Um, we'll work on this like we always do. I hope that video made some sense though. You may need to back, go back and watch a bit again. It's not hard stuff. It really isn't. You got to know your values. If you know your values, it's really pretty easy. And you got to remember what quadrants you can do with which one. Again, cosine is a weird one. Cosine, you can use 1 and 2 for your answers. Answers must be between 0 and 1 pi. If you're doing sine or tangent, you use 1 and 4. Answers must be between negative power 2 and positive power 2. All right, see you tomorrow.